Ooh. That doesn't look too hot in there, does it? Oh, that looks pretty friggin' nasty. That's nasty. And now I'm just gonna slowly pour my Clorox into the hose and make sure I don't get any on me. And you'll see this solution starts to get pumped into the freshwater tank. Did you see how nasty the water was in our water filter housing? That was after it went through one of these filters. I can't imagine what it looks like in our freshwater holding tank. Is your RV water supply safe? RVs come with freshwater holding tanks so you can camp at locations without access to a city water connection. Most campgrounds here in Florida have a water connection at the campsite. But while we were camping in Ontario, Canada for three months last summer, none of them had a water connection. We filled up our 50 gallon freshwater tank as we entered the campground and then used tank water for the next week to 10 days. Last month, we stayed at two campgrounds in the Everglades National Park that did not have a campsite water connection either. So we had to use our freshwater tanks again. Now we had not used our freshwater tank much since last summer and after months here in hot, humid Florida, the water coming out of the tank had a really funky smell. I knew it was time to sanitize our freshwater system to make it safe and smell better. In this video, I will go over how to sanitize your RV's freshwater supply. It's a very simple four-step process that anybody can do. Step one, drain the freshwater system. Step two, fill the freshwater system with sanitizing solution. Step three, let it sit for four to 12 hours to do its work. Step four, drain and rinse the system. Why should you sanitize your freshwater system? Even if you have a filtering system for your freshwater supply, algae and bacteria can still grow in the freshwater holding tank. The algae and bacteria can be harmful to your health if ingested. If you ever use your freshwater holding tank for drinking water, brushing your teeth, washing dishes, or even taking a shower, you should sanitize your freshwater tank and lines periodically to reduce the health risk associated with these harmful elements. How often should you sanitize your system? Part-timers should sanitize anytime they have let their RV sit for long periods of time and especially after storage in the winter. If you're in a cold climate and have to flush out your RV antifreeze anyways, you might as well sanitize at the same time. As full-timers, we should sanitize the fresh tank one to two times per year depending on the environment we keep our RV in. We're in Florida for the winter months but still gets really hot. Here are a few things you need to think about before you get started. Make sure you're parked somewhere where the site has a clean, fresh water supply and a sewer connection. It's also important to do it where you can get the RV level so the tank will fill to the very top. Letting the sanitizing solution sit overnight is best when possible and you won't be able to use your water system. A campground where a bathhouse is nearby is really nice. Have lots of drinking water handy and a couple of jugs of water for washing your hands and things like that. Now I'm going to go over a few of the supplies you should have on hand before you start this project. First of all, start with your RV manual. Now most RVs come with a manual like this. Go to the plumbing section and go to sanitize your RV water system. Your particular RV might have some different procedures that I'm going to talk about here, so make sure you check out your manual. Now our RV is a grand design. It comes with this Nautilus P1 plumbing system. It also has a manual. Read this manual and know your P1 system really well. Now obviously you're gonna need bleach. Now, splashless bleach used to be designated as non-germ killing, but they've recently changed that, and so now even the splashless formula kills 99% of germs. It was just one of those government things. So splashless or non-splashless will work, just I do not recommend using a scented version of a Clorox. In addition, you're gonna need a funnel to funnel the Clorox into your hose. You're gonna need some tape to tape down your fixtures to make sure you're not using them while your system's sitting. Now, of course, you're gonna need a measuring cup. Just a one cup measuring cup will work fine because you have to measure the amount of Clorox you're gonna to have to put into your system. Now, while you're doing this, you might as well replace your filters while you're at it. Now, we have a built-in filter that we use here, and then we use one of these blue things on the outside that before it even gets into our RV. So we actually use two filters. Now I'm gonna go over a couple things that you'll see in this video that you do not necessarily need. I use this little gauge right here that actually hooks into my plumbing system and tells me how much water is entering the system. It's really helpful for me to gauge how much water I'm putting into my freshwater tank and when it's about to overflow. It's about 25 bucks and they're handy, but you don't need one. Now, in addition to 
uh, cleansing it with the Clorox, a lot of people neutralize the smell of the Clorox by doing another rinse with distilled vinegar. I am not going to use distilled vinegar. I'm going to use a product called Spring Fresh. Now, what Spring Fresh does, it does not sanitize your system. It's basically a deodorizer and makes your system smell better, taste better, and kind of cleans a little bit, but does not sanitize. It also helps neutralize that Clorox smell when you're all done. When I dump my freshwater tank, I'm at a state park and I did not want to dump my freshwater tank with all that Clorox in it all over my site. So I made this bucket right here and I put on a bayonet system that will connect to my sewer hose so that my, when I dump my fresh water, it'll go into this bucket, connect to my sewer hose and then go directly into the sewer system. The other way you can do it obviously is to use your pump to pump that water from your tank into your gray water tank and then let it go into the septic system. Now the method I'm going to use today for putting the Clorox solution into your RV will work with pretty much any RV where instead of adding it and siphoning it into the system, I'm just going to add the Clorox solution right here to the hose. I just make sure that I empty my hose out. I don't have any water in this end of the hose. Make sure it's enough volume in there to be able to hold the Clorox solution. I'm going to pour it in here into the hose. I'm going to connect it to the RV, make sure it's in fill mode, and then that will push that Clorox solution into the freshwater tank. So first, as far as the uh, concentration. So you're supposed to use about a quarter of a cup per 15 gallons. Now we have a, uh, a 50 gallon or 53 gallon fresh water tank. So I'm actually gonna use about a cup of the bleach. So I'm gonna take a funnel and I'm gonna put the Clorox solution directly into the hose. And then I'm gonna hook it up to the system, turn on the hose, and that will push it right into the fresh water tank. So let me get the right funnel here. I have a funnel here that's made that will fit perfectly right into the hose. Actually, I think I'm going to use my smaller one here because this goes right into the hose just like that. And now I'm just going to slowly pour my Clorox into the hose and make sure I don't get any on me. The other end of the hose is connected to the campground spigot. Empty out a large section of the hose to make room for the bleach. Pour slowly and use a funnel that fits snugly into your hose. Later on in the video, I will show you the siphon method. It's full. Didn't spill a drop. Okay, so now I have all my Clorox in here. I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to sit this funnel right here. Undo that. I don't want to get any on me. I'm just going to sit that in there for now. So now all my Clorox is in the hose. And I'm going to connect this to my system. I'm just going to connect it to my freshwater inlet here. Tighten that on really nice and tight. And now I'm ready to turn on my water spigot. Now I'm just going to confirm that I have my P1 system in uh, power tank fill mode. So if you look at power tank fill, the white goes like this, the blue goes like this, the black goes that way, the green goes that way. Now I've taped down the red knob because it's actually telling me to put the red knob up, but I still want my hot water heater in bypass. Now if you have something different than a Nautilus system, just make sure you follow the instructions in your manual for bypassing your uh, hot water heater. Now, you, the reason you don't want the Clorox into your hot water heater is because it's corrosive and is uh, can damage your hot water heater. So make sure you figure out how to put it in a bypass mode and keep it in bypass mode while the sanitizing solution is working its way through the system. Okay, so all I have to do now, if we got my, my tank in a power tank mill, I'm just gonna turn on my water spigot here, turn on my water, and that pushes that Clorox that we just put in the hose, that'll push that into our freshwater tank. So now the water is overfilling in the tank. Now I know my tank is completely full to the top. I'm gonna to turn off my freshwater supply. Now I'm gonna turn my RV into dry camping mode so it's gonna use the pump to pump the water from the tank into the RV. So I'm gonna turn it to dry camping mode. White, blue down, black down, this up, of course, red, we're going to leave alone because we want it on bypass. So now the fresh water pump is going to pump the water from the tank, the chlorinated water in the tank, to all the faucets in the RV. We're going to do our kitchen sink. We're going to do our bathroom sink, the shower, the toilet. We're going to do our dishwasher, do the washing machine if you've got one, and make sure if you've got a residential fridge with either a water supply or an ice maker, make sure you also do that. Now I've got chlorinated water coming out all the fixtures. I got them shut off and taped off. Now I have used a little bit of water out of the fresh water tank to run those fixtures. So now I'm actually going to take 
and turn my hot my uh, cold water supply back on and I'm going to run it until it comes out of the overfill again. Okay, so we're out here the next day. We've let the chlorine sit in the lines and the tank all night. Now I'm going to go and pull the release valve to dump all the fresh water that's in the tank. Now the other alternative, if you don't want to do that, if you don't have the system that I do and you don't want to dump it all over the ground, you can just put your uh, RV into dry camping mode and then pump the water from your fresh water tank into your gray tank and then uh, let it uh, run through the gray tank into your septic system. So I'm going to go under and pull my uh, valve here for my fresh water tank release and I'll pull that and so now we've dumped all that chlorinated water out of the fresh tank. We've closed the valve. Now we're coming back over to the Nautilus P1 and we're gonna put it back into power tank fill mode. We want clean fresh water coming back into the tank and so we can rinse the tank and rinse the fixtures. First, I went and put my new filter back in and I put my new filter here so that now I have filtered water going into the fresh tank. So I got it on power tank fill mode. I made sure that's good. So now all I have to do is turn on the fresh water and fill up the fresh tank. I created this graphic to help explain what we just did. The blue lines are the cold water lines, the red lines are the hot water lines, the green boxes are the water fixtures in the RV, the brown box is the water pump, and the Vs are the valves that switch the system from tank fill mode to dry camping mode. The red box is the water heater. One of the first things we do is put the hot water heater into bypass mode, turning this valve because we want to keep the bleach out of the hot water heater. We put the bleach into the water supply hose connected to the city water connection and fill the fresh water tank with the bleach and water solution. When the water started coming out of the tank overfill tube, we knew that the tank was filled to the top. Then we put the system into dry camping mode where the water would come from the tank through the water pump to the fixtures of the RV. We ran the hot and cold side of all the fixtures until we could smell bleach coming out. Then we put the system back into tank fill mode and use the city water connection to top off the freshwater tank to make sure the bleach sanitizing mixture would make contact with the top of the tank while sitting overnight. The next morning, we used the fresh tank dump valve to empty the fresh tank of the bleach solution into the bucket, which went directly into the septic system. Or you can put the system back into dry camping mode and use the water pump to empty the tank by turning on the RV's fixtures, which will transfer the water to the gray tank, then to the septic system but this will make your pump run for a long period of time. We fill the fresh tank one more time, then empty the tank one more time before filling and using the fresh water tank. Now earlier I had used the, the hose method with a funnel to put the, the bleach into the hose and push it into the RV through the city water connection. Now the other method that we can use since we have this Nautilus P1 system, we have the ability to put it on sanitized mode and actually use a siphon hose to siphon it into the system so we can either we could have done that with either the clorox solution right here i have a tank right here i could just mix it in here with the clorox solution and then use the siphon hose to push it into the fresh water tank in this case i'm using this method to put in the spring fresh it, there's a lot of volume here so it'd be hard to put that into the hose you could if you had an empty hose but i'm just going to use the siphon method just to show you the other way if you have a system like this either the nautilus p1 or if the RV has a way of siphoning into the fresh water tank, that's what we're gonna show here. I've made sure that my fresh water tank is empty. I'm going to use my siphon hose, pull off my cap from my spring fresh. Now this spring fresh is uh, made to treat 100 gallons of fresh water. I only have a 50 gallon, so I'm gonna use about half a gallon of it. I'm just going to po poke this through here. We're gonna put my siphon hose in here. I've got a little angle at the top so it works like that. And then we're going to put the pump on. And you'll see this solution starts to get pumped into the freshwater tank. And then after this is finished going in here, I'm gonna hook up my hose like normal. And then I'm gonna fill up the rest of the freshwater tank right to the top. And then I'm gonna do just like I did with the bleach solution. I'm gonna run all the faucets in the RV and I'm gonna stop it right about there. That's about half that tank. And we're gonna pull this out here and we're going to let that finish going in. Okay, now I've got all my spring fresh, my half gallon of spring fresh into the tank. Now I'm just gonna turn on the uh, city water supply. 
I have it on power fill tank mode. I'm gonna fill that tank all the way to the top and then I'm gonna run the fixtures in the RV and uh, get so where I can see that uh, blue water or smell that spring fresh coming out. I'm gonna let that sit for 10 minutes. The directions in here only says it needs to sit for 10 minutes for the spring fresh to do its work. Okay, so now the fresh water tank is filled to the top after we've added our spring fresh. I've switched it over now into dry camping mode. So I'm gonna go into the RV and pump some of that solution that is in the freshwater tank into all the faucets and all the fixtures in the RV. Let it set for 10 minutes. This product only needs a 10 minute sit time. Then I'm going to drain it and refill the system twice. The product's instructions say it has to be drained and filled twice. And after that, we'll fill up the tank and we'll be all set. The main difference with the siphon method, instead of the solution going directly to the freshwater tank through here, the water pump is used to suck the solution through these valves from the siphon hose. It would come in from the siphon hose, through the valves, through the water pump, and then directly into the fresh water tank. The rest of the procedure is the same. After I was done sanitizing the water tank, and I decided to pull the anode out of the water heater. I wanted to see how much the anode had deteriorated since I just did it last November. I was also really surprised how much sediment had accumulated in the water heater in just six months. It was really surprising. Does it stink? Is your fresh water safe? Now you know how to make sure. I hope you found this video helpful in preparation to sanitize your RV water system. Do you have a different way to sanitize or have some tips you would like to share? Please leave a comment below. You can also leave questions and comments on our Instagram and Facebook pages. If you like this type of content, we do lots of RV DIY projects like this, campground tours, product reviews, and full-time RV living experiences. Please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below. Now I'll also leave a link to our RV water heater maintenance video right up over here for you to check out next. And remember, downsizing does make sense.